Welcome everybody to Poets Coffee Table Talks. This is your host, Lisa Tomey. I want to thank Wiki Living Poetry for providing the platform to host this event. And I want to thank all the panelists who are giving of their free time. And thank you to our audience for coming to listen. And I do want everybody to know that I will be making this available on my, uh, my YouTube channel and I will be posting that link onto my blog and circulating it as well as in the um, notes of the um, meetup. I would like to introduce our panelists. Our first person is Noelle Nams. Noelle, if you want to wave. She's a published poet and author, public speaker, and social activist, has been writing since her childhood. Her debut poetry book, Unconditional, Breaking Free for Love, is a collection of 101 eternal love poems. And this book was number one new release on Amazon within 24 hours of launching. She just released Unconditional Vibes. She's all over social media. She did put her link in the chat, but everybody's links in the chat that are on the panel today if you want to check out their books or websites. And if you really want to see Noelle, you need to go on Instagram. I call her the Instagram queen. Welcome, Noelle. Our next person is Justine Kwame. She's a human being engaged in multiple roles and answers to names like daughter, cousin, writer, activist, and creative. She primarily loves the swing between nature and the arts. Justine enjoys being called Professor Kwame by her students at Prince George's Community College, where she helps freshmen gain life skills necessary for college and personal prosperity. She's published two books of poetry, tributes and metaphors, and a Truth Chapters, a collection of creative writing under traveling roots. She also runs a blog centered around police officers who want to explore alternative and re rewarding life or career paths. Ukar Sarswat is a college student studying medicine and is a writer by passion. He's well known for his free flowing, relatable poems and short stories. He was born in a town near Muradabad, India on in June of 2000, he's a, he's a baby of the group. He's in college and he loves literature starting in his school days. His father kind of got him started um, getting his first book of poetry published and it kind of took off from there. His first book was called Melody of Words. Welcome, Mikarsh. Annette Tarpley, she resides in Virginia. She works as a nurse practitioner by day and a poet by night. She's one of the hardest working poets out there. Um, she has a Facebook group called Passion and Poetry, and it's over a thousand members. She can tell us how many. Um, she has published Poetry Potpourri, 6,000 members, Poetry Potpourri. Um, she collaborated with Sarfraz Ahmed and published Two Hearts. And also she can be found, her poems can be found on YouTube by The Sparrow. Then we have James Anthony Ellis, I call him Jim. He's a man of many creative talents and remains true to his path as a journalist, filmmaker, videographer, playwright, screenwriter, and author. His first book, Starting Point, A Guide to Metaphysics, The Golden Time and Love, was initially published in 1989. He also has written Life Traveler, Tears, Breadcrumbs, The Honor Book, and Huh, The Joy, Sorrows, and Comic Relief of Miscommunication. Welcome, everybody. Now that I've at, get that mouthful out. We have a lot of wonderful panelists here. So wonderful. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the crafting of a poem. And I had put some questions out um, that came to mind about what do you do, uh, what do you use to do to inspire your poetry? And I'd like to start with that question. And we're just going to open up. Whichever panelist wants to speak first, you can just jump in. Let's talk about what you use or do to inspire your poetry, to get your poetry going. I'd like to start. Thank okay. you for this wonderful question, Lisa, and having us all together to discuss the craft of poetry. Uh, for me, what inspires me the most is I'm very active on Instagram, you know by now, and there's this global poetry community that I'm a part of. And everybody is posting something or the other every single day. And it's fun to read everybody's emotions and go through what everybody's writing, their ways of writing, their different styles that everybody writes poetry in, 
for that matter sometimes i share in fact every tuesday i share a new poetry style on my instagram profile as well and i encourage people to use that style of poetry and create their own creations and it's it's amazing or just mind blowing to see how everybody's coming up with something new adding on a, a new prompt or getting inspired by other poets and writing things uh, that really inspires me a lot and the second thing for me is nature um, any given day a quiet walk outside in the nature or just sitting and relaxing and watching uh, the broad daylight sky sometimes the night sky that keeps me inspired and keeps me going quite a lot those are my two uh things that keeps me going wonderful great ideas anybody else yes i would like to do that so hi everyone just being funny so nice to be here with all of you um i think poetry is um i think poets kind of give the rest of the world permission to actually be true to themselves because we are always you know kind of sharing our truth you know but um i think that my my personal truth and my authenticity always inspires me and that's something that i don't have to i feel like i don't, I don't really have to go anywhere to be inspired because you know i feel like i'm a dimension already I feel like there's a whole world here so I do definitely agree with Noel that nature is, it's, you just sit outside and you just soak up the sun and you sit under a tree and you just, you know, all of a sudden get all of this, you know, this energy. But I just have to sit down with myself and think about what is real for me, what is true, and what is maybe really going on in my life at that moment. Where have I grown? How have I progressed? And, you know, really just seeing myself as a world and as a self. So yes, that's what inspires me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Annette? Yeah. Um, well, I can write on about anything. So um, you can give me a title I can write. I do a lot of picture prompts. I, I do a lot of fictional writing, but then I write about nature. I write about uh, very feministic type things. I used to be a forensic nurse for many years and uh, listened to a lot of stories of domestic violence so i've done a lot of things on that so um i can write about just about anything um that i have some type of knowledge on so i have many different areas i write on um like i said i do do a lot of fiction and stories so thank you anyone else okay so the next question that we have um, has to do with your muse. If you, some people believe in a muse, some people don't. If you have a muse, who or what is your muse? Do you, well, Annette kind of answered this about using pictures, events, or a combination of something else. Um, does anybody here want to speak to the muse? Jim, I see you're you're muted. I think. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. It's Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to talk about muses. I often think that our earliest storytellers. If we were fortunate enough to have parents who read to us, or when we were young in school, we had teachers who shared their love of reading. And as, as we've grown, our work has grown and our muses change. But I think it goes back to our earliest storytellers because they were in fact our first muses. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank Thanks. you. Jim, I think your your mic is open now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> basically, I just want to say this. My muse is all of you and everyone that I come in contact with because where I get my inspiration is I just basically listen. 
I'm a good listener and I every once in a while somebody will say a phrase or they don't they're not trying to but they'll say a phrase they'll say a, a sentence and it's like oh my goodness that's a poem did you hear what you just said they're like what what did I just say <laughs> and it's just a little just a little line and I said that's a poem watch just wait a couple of days I'm going to email you <laughs> and it will be a poem with that title and lo and behold all I need to do is sit down because it's already written on some level so if I just sit down and be faithful to the muse which comes through everyone all of you uh, then I, I am successful because I've sat down and I've listened and I've allowed it to come through. Thank you. I often am visited by my muse about three or four in the morning. Lately, I've been waking up earlier and just staying up and writing because it seems like that idea just flood me. I mean, I will compose entire lengthy poems in my mind. And so I might as well get up and start writing. Um, but for some reason, my muse wants me to get up and get to writing. Um, I am a morning person, <laughs> but I could like to sleep later than 4 a.m. muse. But anyway, but one of the things that Zan Johns noticed that I was saying a lot of is there's a poem in that. So now I've even put that on my signature in my email. There's a poem in that um, because I do say that a lot. So I guess just like Jim, you start listening to people and you realize there's a poem in so many things that are said and so many things you observe. Life is a poem. Anybody else? Um, yeah, so I think that what enrages me usually will kind of catapult me off of the bed or chair wherever I am and I can kind of create a lot of different types of things from that that might be a painting, that might most definitely be a poem, you know, like a three-page essay. So things that just make me feel <laughs> like it's always like this this, <laughs> this force kind of takes over. Uh -huh. And um, I just kind of go with that and I, I write. And I also think that, I'm not sure if this is true for any, any of you, but have you ever been in that situation where you, maybe you, you've experienced like a belief that you did not know was limiting you. And then the moment something clicks and maybe you have an experience and it just makes you reflect and you almost have these like explosions in your mind. And it's, it's really like something has opened up in your brain because now you busted the, the limiting belief because you, you have the insight, right? You have the spiritual insight, you have the wisdom. Now you see how wrong you were and why you had that block. And that you just look around like, where am I? Where am I? I don't really know. And then you kind of go and start to write, you know, whatever it is. Right. That you... mm -hmm. I, I totally get that. I was on a writing frenzy today. I just could not, I wrote for, I don't know, all morning. I wrote, wrote, wrote. Um, and it was just because so many things kept coming to me like that, you know, and it's like demanded me to, to write. And so I had no other choice. Other than feel bad because I didn't write it down. I, I don't want to feel that way. <laughs> Anybody else that, you know, even if you're not on the panel, you can still speak up, you know, or answer these. Certainly welcome. I think I'd just like to add uh, all these perfectly fit for me as well, you know, uh, listening to people or something coming to me and talking to me, or all, all such realizations in life. There's one thing uh, which stays another constant with all these things with me, and that is music. Sometimes I'm listening to different kind of music, completely out of the way, going out of the way, and listening to something entirely different, could be anything, any genre. And that just calls out, and it's like, what does this music talk about? And, and I just have to uh, start fidgeting on my phone, on my notes, and... Um, there are some poems that that come out of it and that's another uh, wonderful muse for me mm -hmm. absolutely sam lisa uh when i was on your podcast we talked about that three three a.m wake up <laughs> muse mm -hmm. and uh i think i i think it was you that i said um 
I like sleep as much as I do poetry. So, you know, I try not to get up because I need the eight hours. But uh, this weekend on Saturday night, I had my grand, three of my grandchildren and I was exhausted. I'd been writing uh, earlier in the day. So I get to bed and a poem, I'm, I'm sound asleep. And, and I wrote a poem in my sleep and I didn't write it down. I always reach and write with my eyes still closed and I could pretty much figure out what it is the next day. But I was so tired on Saturday, I didn't write it down. I woke up yesterday morning and went, oh my goodness, what was that poem? And I got pieces of it, but I wrote an entire poem that I didn't write down. So lesson, wake myself up, no matter how tired I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, let's talk a little bit about the crafting of a poem, about how, when you sit down to write a poem, what type of methods do you use? Give us some ideas. Maybe we can use some pointers. Anybody? What's your, what's your process? I am very much off the cuff uh, writer. So I just start with an idea and then it just evolves. So um, every once in a great while, I might actually think about it a little bit, but I just kind of start with an idea and then it evolves. And sometimes it goes where I think it's gonna go and then sometimes it takes a detour. So um, I'm just uh, very spontaneous with my writing. Arlene, I actually like after to... I after I write write out my poem, I go back and do the line breaks, and then I read it out loud to see if it feels and sounds right. And that's and that's when I go back and you know take words out or put words in. But I listen to my own voice and hear if there's a rhythm, and if the if the words flow, and if one line follows the other or needs to be moved around. But basically, that's that's it. Is you know, it has to sound right and feel right, and then I know it's it's complete. Thank you, Justine. Yeah. So um, I actually am very raw when I write. I don't like to. Um, it's difficult for me sometimes not to think too hard, but I also just like to kind of put whatever comes out on the page and. You know, and uh, Seem to have a little noise problem. Here we go. Okay. Um, well, I feel like I really like to play around with alliteration, you know, and have it kind of going to the next line. So I might have, you know, a word that starts with a little bit S, and then the next line starts with the same thing, and we have them rhyming. But um, I just really like to go with the flow. I, I think that sometimes as poets, we, we sometimes concern ourselves too much with the methodology. And, you know, it really blocks your creativity sometimes, so it's always best if you're going to go back and edit, you know, if you want to edit, you know, go back and do that later. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? I usually uh, get a, when I come up with the, uh, the theme or the idea that I'm working on, I can feel it. It feels full and rich, and so I know there's, it's, it's there, and then I have an opening line that just kind of comes to me. If I get that opening line, and it feels right, like I'm with Arlene on the on the feeling right, and uh, you know, and saying it out loud, uh, get that first line, and then from that first line, I can get the meter. Like I can hear, it's like a melody. I can hear it in my head, and it it flows. There's no like blockages in that as I say it out loud. Um, way to go, Arlene! Like you're saying it out loud, it helps me to. And then once I get that meter, then I just kind of let, it's kind of like writing a music, I guess, or lyrics to a song. I keep it going and it does surprise me sometimes as well. When after writing it for a little bit, I'll get that little like light bulb that goes, oh, that's how it wants to go towards the end. You know, it might hook back to the beginning, but it just starts with that first line that gives me the meter and I follow that. Thank you. Karsh, are you um, 
Let's see your mic is on. Did you have something you want to share? Coming out a little fuzzy. to work on that sorry yeah then i was wondering how many people write at at your computer or laptop i can't i can't create at the computer i have to write pen and paper and then type it up and then edit it from there um, many, I, I almost never write on pen and paper. I write the majority of my poems on my phone, which is really bad. I do I do type them into my computer. I did that last night, but I'm I I do do some on pen and paper, but it's very rare. The last one I did was my I'm getting divorced takeoff poem, writing it as I drove down the the road, and then I had to write it down because ideas were coming. So um, I, um, I, I can't have it. That's how I don't Do you record? Does anyone record and then write it up? I think it, I tried to do that. I find it hard. I do do voice to text into my phone instead mm -hmm. of having to punch it in. But then my phone does not speak Annette very well. So, you know, I often have to um, redo it. Yeah, um, to respond to you, Donetta, I feel like it depends on what you're You know, like if you're writing a poem and it's something that you feel maybe really intensely about, then I would say for me, I do pen and paper because you have to type and, you know, it just, it's the energy of it is different. But of course, an essay or even like a poem that I'm thinking about, if I'm, if I'm in the process of actually being really mental or cerebral with the poem, then I'll try to type it up. You know, but if I'm more in the flow, it's very instinctual, then I like the pen and paper because it's, it's that tactile, you know. Janetta, I'm have... with you. I'm Will in Chicago. And if you look around this room, that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from. Comes from some kids over there and some mechanics, a lot of a lot of space here, and then a lot of paper because I do like using that. I got stuff. And I started getting serious about writing six years ago meaning daily. Uh, so I've got the filing cabinet over there. That's one's already full. And over there is my A, B, C, D, and F list. I don't throw anything away. I just go visit it. The muse shows up. Mic check. Mic check, somebody. Ah. So the muse yeah. shows up if I'm writing um, stand-up or comedy, maybe. Um, I'm a drummer. There's some drumsticks over there. So I can feel the beat. I will blame um, my boyhood idols, Cher and Muhammad Ali, amongst other people. Uh, I was a trash talker like Michael Jordan before he was, and I got the same tongue wag, but I got teased about it, so I developed thick skin. But I took that nickname, and so I got a couple of kids' uh, anthologies on chicken lips. So uh, just use anything I got from the past. Jim talked about observation, really just listening. Like I got a poem right here. I heard somebody say, same old, same old. I didn't like it in that particular setting uh, at that time. So now that's going to be a poem. Uh, to close, uh, somebody challenged me from Heron, Mike did, um, to put a, because um, I do talk hip hop and smack. Um, he said, you're the one that can put a haiku inside a limerick because i do a lot of limericks i'm irish uh and got that done i i'm a math freak so now i'm on villanelles i start at the end i just need to get those two lines one and three because they're 18 19. and once you got the two lines all right you got 20 words but you actually got 80 words of your 190 and then the rest just works in and out and if it's on pause just put it over there get something else um so thank you thank you early if i'm at home i'm at the computer and i took a business course in high school so my computer my fingers and i become one uh it, the, the words flow so the computer is very good for me 
because I use also a separate keyboard, which is easier than actually than typing on the computer. I don't, I don't, I, I guess there's a difference in space. But I also love to take the pad and pencil and go out to the to the woods, to the state park, uh, somewhere completely remote, somebody's formal garden, and sit in the garden and write with pen and paper. So I use both, but uh, but the computer and I do become one, just like a pad and pen that I become one and let the words flow. So fortunate, I'm fortunate that I can do both. The computer makes me feel like I'm back at work. Oh, for some yeah. reason, I, you know, I, I can, I'm old school with the pen and paper. It just feels good. It feels right. And then when I type it up, now I'm at work ready to edit. Yeah, I've gone both ways with it. And like, you know, of a morning I might be on the computer, but I always keep paper in my purse. Um, if I, for some strange reason, don't have something. I can find something to write on. Um, I've grabbed magazines and even composed poems out of magazines that I found. Um, you know, doing you know the found poetry with blackout and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, sometimes writing it by hand. Then when you go to the computer, like you say, then you start editing. So. Although I I have to say I there from time to time. I wonder about the writers who wrote full manuscripts, Hemingway by hand, and the crossing out of words and the mm -hmm. changing around one paragraph to put it in a different place and moving it. You know, it's so easy to do that on the computer. And it's I'm in awe of anybody that used to write full size books using pen and ink or, you know, paper and pencil. Just amazes me. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody here that does morning pages from Artist Way, uh, where you every morning do writing by hand um, yes. for a certain period of time? You do Arlene. I I used to do that. I did that in, you know several years ago, and that works. It gets the juices flowing. But I write so much now that the juices are always flowing. <laughs> so that's what makes the difference. But that's a wonderful thing to do if mm -hmm. you're not used to writing every day, if it doesn't right. come easily. You're gonna come up with some poetry, I can guarantee if you sit down and do morning pages, it just inspires writing. And basically, if you haven't done it before, you just sit down and write. You don't think about a goal or anything, you just write what comes to mind and it's a clearing of the head first thing in the morning. It's like morning coffee on paper. And then, you know, then you go from there. Anybody else that has something they want to share about that? I'm definitely connected um, to my iPad. It's the one thing that lets me write any place that I am. I have serious vision problems. And what I found is if I invert things, there's an awful lot that Apple offers on the iPad that allows me to work, make larger fonts, make um, larger text, make things bold, and actually reverse it. So when I'm writing, I'm writing black on white or white on black, whichever works best. It makes the other icons look a little strange on the regular homepage, but for what I'm doing, it's working and everything just pours through just the way it did when I was a child and I had a pen, a pencil in my hand and a legal pad by my bed. And that's the iPad for me. That's what it, it's replaced, that mm -hmm. childhood hold on pen and paper. And I know for a fact that Annette has a gorgeous pen if she ever wanted to use it because we have matching pens but I don't use mine either. I'm just really glad that we have them. I admire people that can figure out how to do something on an iPad or a phone. I, I just can't do it. It's yeah, incredibly I, easy. It's yeah. it's just become easy. Yeah, it's just closed my mind. I, I've done small things on my phone, but 
I get frustrated <laughs> to go back to the computer or write it out. Vikars, did you have something to share? I know you went out and came back in. Let's see if we're doing better with your audio. Yeah, so I I am probably one of the most out of touch people when it comes to taking notes on my phone or something because like to me poetry comes only when i'm sitting in front of an empty page and it's it's actually really bad because sometimes an empty piece of paper can also be one of the most daunting sites like it's sometimes just like if you're blank it's probably the worst thing to do because there's no ideas and then you are facing an empty sheet of paper it, with no words on it to give you any further inspiration as well. But I like to, I like to uh, write with a pen. I actually have a good collection of pens just because of that. Great, thank you. Okay, I would like to invite I'll just go around. I'll start with Annette. I would like to invite our panelists to share their poetry with us. Yes. So, Annette, would you like to start? Oh, sure. Um, I have some here that um, I think I'm going to read one um, that I wrote just this last week. It's on cheap paper. I usually don't print my stuff out. I usually actually read it off my phone, so this is unusual. Um, this is called A Walk with God in the Rain. A stroll alone in the rain one dark, cool night would change your course for the rest of her life. Once she was surrounded by loved ones all around, she had changed a life in solitude, her decisions not sound. She had found herself in a crossroad in life. Monetarily, she had much amidst the gnawing of heartache and strife. She thought she was a child of God and always followed his will. Yet she found her life had little meaning. She was unfulfilled. She cried out, God, why don't you listen to me? Don't you hear my prayers? I pray to you, but no answer of my pleas, you are unaware. God said to her, my child, when you cry out, I would be there to listen. You only heard what you wanted to hear. Such was your disposition. When you held out your hand, I offered mine to you. When you were down, I gave you the sun with skies of blue. When you, were thought, when you thought too much of yourself, I would show you someone in need. You knew of their trials and hardships, but you did not take heed. When you made poor decisions and you were bound to get hurt, I watched you, my child, my parental guidance, I did assert. Instead of listening to me, you chose to turn away. Your conscience pleaded to you and told you with me to stay. I was your pillow and dried your eyes at night when you cried. I was the wind following you, always with you by your side. I'm the moon in the sky with the effervescent glow. I'm your conscience, pay attention, and then the right decisions you will know. I am your guardian. When you fall down, I pick you up and brush you off. Hear my voice. When I whisper to you, listen closely, for it is soft. I am the rainbow in the sky. See my colors of love. I am your God, your father. One day you will reside with me above. Thank you. Noel. Yes, uh, I would like to read something from my book, Unconditional Vibes, which just came out in February. And it's a piece very close to my heart. Um, here it goes. I have questioned, questioned, questioned myself a lot. I'll say it one more time. I have questioned myself a lot while standing in front of the mirror, looking at my naked self, while sitting in front of someone, looking for myself in their eyes, through their glasses, while traveling by metros or planes, looking at my own reflection in the windowpane, while working at my desk, looking at my handwritten 
notes. I have questioned myself about my beauty, my worth, my belief in self. And if there is something I have which I didn't deserve. When I faced my inner self in the mirror, I always felt smaller and ashamed of being in the skin I am. When I sat across somebody, I always thought I am the one who will ask a stupid fact. When I travel places, I thought I don't know anything about this world. And when I worked for hours late at night, I kept pulling myself down with my handwritten plights. I have questioned myself so much that now when somebody questions me about the question I kept answering to myself, I see myself in that person drowning deep in this pool of the mind, which keeps questioning every move you make, which keeps critiquing you like a nagging friend who doesn't want you to win, who kept pulling you to the side of the clay playground where nobody would see you or talk to you or talk about you. I see this version of myself and I want to yell to this world to talk about these questions and answer them to yourself while standing in front of the mirror when you cry about your self-worth in your bare skin, burying your soul with layers of the skin deep within. Be that person who wipes those tears and faces the real you in the eye. Be that person who respects oneself in front of others. Be that person who's ready to explore oneself while going on adventures in the world. Be that person who's proud to look at their own accomplishments. Be the person who questions the unquestioned for oneself and move ahead with a mind so vigorous and intoxicant that nobody can ever question you for what you ever did or want. For in the end, only sky will be the limit to these questions. And in the sky, always strive to fly high, never clouded with self-doubt and cry. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Jim? Thank you. Uh, so this is written for my dad. My dad passed away March 15th of this year. I started a poem for him the day before he passed, and then I finished it the day he did. And if anyone's been in that situation where it just seems so hopeless, and you know what kind of action can you take? And so I wrote this uh, called Sending an Angel to My Dad. <clears throat> what can you do when there's nothing you can do? Where can you be when it seems you just can't come through? What can be accomplished when you're supposed to let it go? What is there to know when there is no way to know? What can be done when you give it up to the glory on high? What can you trust so that you and your family can get by? When the love is bigger than any actions that can be taken, when mortal time and space makes existence seem forsaken. What is there for me to do when feeling downcast and sad, perhaps simply sending an angel to my dad? Yesterday in hospital bed, he laid in wait. Vitals were good, but other signs not so great. The morning came and the text gave harsh news. Now there was something I knew I had to do. Get on the wet and rainy road as fast as I could. Crystal clear, taking action, hoping for the good. As I drove, I still questioned what I could truly bring. Like the little drummer boy, I didn't think I had anything. But focused on my mission, I brought what I had perhaps just a prayer and sending an angel to my dad. Sending an angel, standing tall as we must, summoning the faith, surrounding ourselves in trust. So arriving at the hospital, it was a surreal scene, something you see on TV or movie screen, nurses, hospital room, hospital bed, my father still and my sister gently 
touching his head. Memories, concerns, and tears arrive in times of life and death. With my eyes closed, I barely noticed his last breath. What can one do in moments when there is nothing left to do? When the immensity of love is all that can come through. Perhaps just be, stay calm, and remain in the presence, rekindling what exists in the still eternal essence. Peace would come in knowing there would be nothing left to add, just this poem and sending an angel to my dad. That's beautiful, Jim. Thank Sorry you. for your loss. Thank you. Very beautiful poem. Yeah. Yes, you took us with you. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was awesome. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Justine. Okay, so um, definitely have the full notebook here. This is not online at all, but um, this is called Resilience Never Be Defeated. The battle is won before your feet flirt with the mat. So who, whoever's unmuted, can you please mute yourself so I'm not hearing your background noise? Thank you so much. So resilient, never be defeated. The battle is won before your feet flirt with the mat. The battle is won before your eyes erupt, setting sights on attackers. The battles we face are won in the mind. I will take souls from my enemies. Resilient, the beloved child of faith. States never be defeated, for I am always here. Your rock, your everything, the one you can count on. When the shaky structures of society crash down around you, trust in me and you will never be defeated. Thank you. Thank you. Justine doesn't know I'm going to tell about this, but she um, has edited some poems for me. She's an excellent poetry editor, so I'm going to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, Yukarsh. Wave if you can hear me, Yukarsh. I think he's froze up. I think he's frozen. Yeah, I think so too. Rats. Okay. Um, does anybody have anything they want to share before we get ready to go? I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I just remind you that Heartbeats Anthology of Poetry is published. If anybody wants to go grab a copy. Some of our people in here are in the book. So but thank you so much for coming. Um, I am going to do more coffee table talks, um, but it's not going to be every week. But I am going to start another one in May. So seems to be an interest, so we're going to keep them going. Thank you all so much for coming. Big round of applause for everybody. You have a wonderful night writing that poetry. Thank you. Night. Good to see everybody. Same. Same here. Good to see you all. Hi, everyone. Have Good a great week. week. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good pleasure. Bye bye. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Thank you.